Before we really get into some of the examples, this is just going over some symbols that we probably haven't seen in a little while here. So I'm really not going to go over this except for one of them here. But these are common symbols that you're going to see in homework questions or some of the problems that we're about to go over and examples we're about to go over here in a minute. So the only one I really want to go over, actually, I couldn't find a really good mathematical symbol. There should be a line that goes all the way across there, and that's not divisible. And yes, that looks like the OR symbol that you and I are used to in programming. You might see that in a straight-up discrete math course book uh, when they're not used to programming. So that's divisible, and then we have not divisible, which again is supposed to have that arrow in between here, or I shouldn't say arrow, but the slash in between there. Now I bring that up because there's going to be three common terms that come up that we've, we know, but you know what, still it's worth going over because it's going to be part of the proof that we need for strong induction. And that is division. I'm going to go over division here in, in big detail here in a moment. But if we have something that's A is divisible by B, there exists some T where, again, Z means all integers including a zero, that B equals A times T. So there's going to be some T that's going to be able to get in there. Notice there's no remainder or anything else like that, which is, again, something I'm going to go over here in a moment. Prime numbers. Should know what prime numbers it are, I should say. A prime is only if it's property or divisible or divisors of one and by itself. And then composite is just the opposite of a prime. Well, if it's not a prime, then it is a composite. So these are a couple of terms that are going to show up here in a little bit, so bear with me. <laughs> 